guys, so this is going to be the, I think, the final video in the playlist where we're going to be looking at the Edexcel Higher Paper and it's the 2017 non-calculator specification. So in the previous video we finished at question number 18 so we're going to have a go with question number 19 onwards. These are where the questions do get a little bit more challenging so I'm hopeful we'll be able to cover everything inside the next half an hour or so. Okay so let's move on then with question number 19 that deals with vectors. Now this particular question, I must admit, took me a little bit of time to understand what it is they're actually wanting you to do. So um, let's just take it little bit by bit. So we're saying that we've got um, vector OA is A and vector OC is C. Well that's perfectly fine. And then it says X is the midpoint of line AC. So all I would do is if I draw a little line between A and C, I've got a midpoint which is I'm going to call it X okay and then OCD is a straight line okay so that OC to CD equals K to 1 so if I extend that on a little bit I'm going to say there's a D over there we don't know where it is but we do know the ratio is K to 1 between OC and CD Okay, and what they're asking us to do then is find that value of k. And the bit of information you do get given is you get given that this x to d vector is 3c minus a half a. Okay, so on the surface it looks, well, actually it's quite a complicated question, but we'll kind of work through it in a little bit of... Um, uh, hopefully a fairly good pace. So really what we've got is if we want to find out um, this relationship and this value of k, it would help us to find out the value of cd first. So I'm going to look at finding that, the vector cd. Well the vector cd we don't know anything about, but what we do know is we can go from c to x, vector c to x, and add that to vector x to d plus vector x to d, which we've actually been given. It's this horrible looking one over here. OK, so let's have a look and concentrate firstly on Cx. Well, what we do know is that because x is the midpoint, then this is the same as saying a half of vector Ca. OK, so we now need to find Ca. Right, well, let's have a look at that. So CA is going to be um, this between here and here. Well, again, we don't know anything about here and here, but we do know we can go along here and up here. So it's actually going to be vector CO plus vector OA. OK, and actually what we're going to end up with is a half of it. Right, so let's just have a look at that. So if we look at CO, well, that's going to be minus C. So we end up with a half minus C and OA is going to be plus A. OK, not very tidy when it looks something like that. So I'm just going to swap those two terms around in the middle here and I'm going to get a half of A minus c. And that actually is the vector cx. Okay, so let's now plug that in, bearing in mind that we've already got xd because we've been given it, so we can now calculate this. Okay, so I'm going to write this along the top here, just so that you can follow this hopefully on the picture a little bit as well. I'm going to have vector cd. So vector cd is going to be made up of a half a minus C, which is this value of CX, okay? And then it's going to be added to 3C minus a half of A. Now, although that looks really not very pleasant at the moment, it actually will work out relatively well once we get rid of the brackets. So we've got vector CD is equal to a half A minus a half C plus 3C minus a half A. A. Okay, so we can then cancel out the A terms. We've got half A and minus a half A, and we've got minus a half C plus 3C. Well, that's going to be 
2.5c. Now I'm going to keep this as decimals. Normally I shy away a little bit from decimals, but uh, I'm going to keep it as decimals because it makes the, the working a little bit easier. So what we're saying is that value of CD is 2.5c. So if you like, I could write 25 C at the top there. Okay, just to remind myself. Now, um, then it says that the uh, ratio OC to CD is K to 1. And it's actually that K to 1 that we're, we're, we're looking out for. We're trying to find that value of K. So what we're saying is, is that we've got um, OC to CD and that's K to 1. Okay, but what we've worked out is actually CD is 2.5. Well, we don't want it as 2.5. What we do is we want it as 1. So at the moment, we've got that 1 to 2.5 that we've got to change around. OK, so the way we would look at that is to say that we want this to be 1. OK, we want it to be that one there. So we've got to change this value in order to reflect this being one. Now, the easiest way I think I would do it is actually two and a half is quite tricky to sort of work with. So what I would do is I would say, well, actually, I'm going to double that. I'm going to make that two to five. OK, because if I double this, it becomes five, which is a much easier number to deal with and I double that, that becomes two. So it's still exactly the same ratio, but it's just gonna make my life a little bit easier because then when I want this value to be one, I just divide through by five, so I get two fifths. OK, now I don't particularly want two fifths because I've left everything in decimals, but actually this is the correct answer. The value of K is two fifths. If I want, I can write that as 0 0.4 to 1. OK, so a little bit tricky, that final little bit of just changing this value. It's quite tricky actually to get to this value, but once you've got there, you've then got to change it back to one if you can because that's the information they've given us okay so it does take a little bit of time to kind of work through but basically in this particular question the value of k equals 0.4 or two fifths okay i hope that's all right for you let's move on to another question which is Oh, kind of as challenging, really, which is going to be solving some simultaneous equations. OK, so let's just move on then to question number 20. And this is where we've got a pair of simultaneous equations. Are we going to be asked to find the value of x and y? Now, uh, we're being asked to do it uh, algebraically as well. OK, well, it seems fairly straightforward to begin with because you can all you can do really is you can change this to y equals 13 plus 3x. And then the standard form is to take this value of 13 plus 3x and substitute it into here. So that's exactly what we're going to do. OK, so I'm going to end up with x squared. And rather than writing plus y squared, I'm going to write 13 uh, plus 3x squared, and that equals 25. So let's expand that out a bit. I've got x squared plus 13 plus 3x multiplied by 13 plus 3x that equals 25. This is kind of where your problem starts um, because um, there's some quite a lot of arithmetic that's got to go into this, but hopefully you'll be able to follow this out. So I'm going to just deal with those brackets. So I've got 13 times 13, well that's plus 169. And then I've got 13 times plus 3x is plus 39x. And then plus 39x again. Well, that's going to move me plus 78x. And then I've got 3x times 3x is going to be 9x squared. And that equals 25. OK, now I did that fairly quickly, but you might have to do, or you might need to do some little calculations on the side. I must admit, uh, my mental arithmetic is not as good as the video implies. So I do do a fair bit of calculations myself. OK, so let's make that now equal to zero and gather up all the like terms together. So if I bring this 9x squared and this x squared, together I get 10x squared and then I've got plus 78x 
and then I've got this 25, I'm going to bring it over here and minus it, so I'm going to end up with plus 144 equals zero. Okay, so we're in a position now where it's starting to look um, a little bit easier to deal with. Now, um, I think there's a couple of ways you can deal with this at this particular point. Um, you could go along the route of using the quadratic formula. Um, I've tended to try to find a way around the quadratic formula if I can, particularly on a non-calculator paper, but it will work for you. Um, you just need to be uh, fairly okay with your arithmetic you do with this method anyway. What I'm going to do is I'm going to divide that through by, far, uh, by 2 because if I do that it just makes my numbers a little bit easier to deal with. So I'm going to get 5x squared plus 39x plus 72 that equals 0. Okay now at this point again you know, by, by all means, go ahead, use the quadratic formula. Um, it is a way of doing it. It's not a problem at all. It will work for you. However, you could also try um, a method where you multiply these two numbers together and then you look for the two factors that add up to make 39. So 5 times 72 is actually 360. Now there's lots of factors of 360. Um, so you could have, uh, I don't know, 4 times 90 or you could have 10 times 36. But actually there are two factors that when you add them together will make 39 and that is 15 and 24 okay so I think this is where it's a little bit difficult if you're not aware of that um, then you'll probably more likely go down the quadratic formula route or you might spend a fair bit of time and just eventually end up on those but when you've got those what you can do is rather than writing 39x we can write this as 5x squared plus 15x plus 24x plus 72 equals zero. Okay, and then when we've got a situation like this, what we do is we factorize the first two terms and the second two terms. This is a particular technique that's used for factorizing um, these types of quadratic formulas. Um, sometimes it can work, um, but you just need to be a little bit careful with it. So if I factorize 5x squared plus 5x, I'm going to factorize that for 5x, and then I end up with x plus 3. I'm going to factorise 24x plus 72 by 24 and again I end up with x plus 3 and that equals 0. Okay, so really now if I want to show the two factors of 5x squared plus 39x plus 72, I'm going to end up with 5x plus 24 multiplied by x plus 3 and that equals 0. So therefore I've got now my two values of x. So one of them is where x equals 3, so uh, beg pardon, x equals minus 3 because x plus 3 equals 0. So therefore, when I bring this 3 over, x equals minus 3. I also then have a value of x equals, well, 24 divided by 5. It's actually minus 24 over 5, which equals minus 4.8. OK, and again, a little bit of calculation required on that, but that is exactly the same as saying minus 48 divided by 10. OK, so minus 48 divided by 10 is minus 4.8. So now I've got two values of x. So what I can do is I can say when x equals minus 3, y equals, and remember what we did right at the very beginning, is we created this formula, 13 plus 3x for the value of y. So y equals 13 plus 3 times minus 3, which means that y equals 4. OK, so I've got when x equals minus 3, y equals 4. OK, and then I do exactly the same as when x equals minus 4.8. And again, just a little bit of calculation, y equals 13 plus 3 times minus 4.8. OK, um, so you might want to do a little bit of calculation at the side there, but you'll end up with y equals 
13 minus 14.4, so therefore y equals minus 1.4. Okay, so the final two coordinates are going to be x equals minus 4.8 and y equals minus 1.4. Okay, and that's the answer to this particular question. Now, you could do this. I have stuck to decimals with this particular one. You could, if you wanted to, change it to dealing with fractions. Um, ordinarily, I tend to prefer fractions, I must admit. But, um, you know, I think in this particular case, working it through with decimals is probably just a little bit more helpful with this particular question. Okay, so let's move on then to question number 21. And question number 21 deals with proof, um, which is um, one of the topics, the newer topics for uh, GCSE uh, on the new 9 to 1 specification. So uh, we've been given a fair bit of information, AB equals CD, and we're going to prove that AC, so AC is this line along here, and that equals BD, which is this line along here. OK, so what we're being told is that AB equals CD and we're being told that angle ABC equals angle BCD. OK, so in other words, ABC equals angle BCD. So it's this angle and this angle together. OK, well, what we would also say is that um, we've got this situation where uh, we've got B and, C, B and C. So we can also say that BC is common to both. Now, this is a fairly straightforward question, really, if you're uh, involved in kind of these sorts of proofs, because from those three points, we can actually say that um, we have side, angle and side. OK, the first proof is, is that we've been told that AB equals CD, so that's fine. We're also being told that um, the angle, angle ABC equals angle BCD. And then finally, we've worked out that BC equals uh, BC, or BC is common to both. OK, so therefore, we can say that, therefore, line AC equals line BD. OK, hope that's all right for you. Let's move on then to the final question in this particular paper, which deals with um, the cosine formula. Now, again, on the surface of it, it looks really quite tricky and it does take a fair bit of time working through. But basically, um, you just need to kind of separate things out a little bit in this one. Um, so what we're going to say is we're going to prove that that is that. OK, well, that's absolutely fine. But let's just have a look at that, because we've got effectively two triangles. We've got a triangle, uh, if I just move this up a little bit, where I've got a triangle here. And this triangle is going to be A, C and um, you've got X here and X here, and we know this is 30 degrees, OK? And then we've also got a slightly larger triangle, OK, where this is 10 and this is 10. Now, we knew this was 30 degrees, but we don't know this one here. So it's this one that we're looking at. But we do know that if this is P and Q, then actually this, which we're going to call A, is exactly the same to this, which is A. And if you go back to the diagram itself, you can kind of see that really, because if I, if I sort of draw this into here, this is B, P, Q, and this line along here is the same as AC, which is this line along here. OK, so um, we do know then the cosine rule. Um, and what we can say with the cosine rule is that if we're looking at this here, we've got um, 
we call this a squared if you like so i'm going to call it uh, um, a c squared or a squared it doesn't really matter so a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine a okay so let's have a look at that well b squared we don't know but we know it's x so we've got x squared plus x squared minus 2 times x times x times now we've got the cosine of 30 degrees okay now in order to be successful this question you need to know the cosine of 30 degrees is actually root 3 over 2 okay now bear in mind this is the very last question in the um, in the paper so it's going to take a little bit of time to kind of work through all righty so if we then work that through let's just tie this up a little bit i'm going to get 2x squared minus 2x squared cosine 30 degrees okay now don't be tempted to just cancel these out because it won't actually work out for you i'm afraid okay so let's have a look then at um this along here so now i've got the cosine of pbq okay well i know already that this is going to be the same as this it's already a squared so i can write um, again, I'm just going to write the normal cosine formula. A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cosine um, A. Okay, now we know this A is different. So if you like, this one deals with triangle AC and this one deals with triangle PQ. Okay, so let's have a look now at plugging this information in well this value of a squared is this value along here which is the same as this value along here so what i'm going to write is that this is going to be um, 2x squared minus 2x squared cosine 30 degrees and that equals um, b squared which is 10 squared plus 10 squared so 10 squared plus 10 squared minus 2 times 10 times 10 times cosine a okay right so it is looking horrendously complicated at the moment um, it will kind of work out but it's going to just take a little bit of time okay so let's just start to tidy this up a little bit so i'm going to have 2x squared minus 2x squared times cosine 30 well that's going to be 2x squared minus 2x squared times root 3 over 2. well that's good because that and that will cancel out so on the left hand side i've got 2x squared minus x squared root 3. okay hopefully that's all right for you on the right hand side here i've got 10 squared plus 10 squared, well, that's 100 plus 100 is going to be 200, and that's minus 200 cosine A. And then really, it's just a case of manipulating this formula until you get to a point where you can isolate cosine A. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn the paper over and then we're going to follow it through. So I'm just going to write that out again. So I've got um, 2x squared and I've got minus 2x squared uh, root 3 over 2. And remember, we cancelled those out and that equals 200 minus 200 cosine A. OK, so let's have a look at this. Well, I've got 2x squared minus x squared root 3. All right. And then I've got that equals 200 minus 200 cosine A. OK, so because I don't want this negative 200 cosine A, I'm going to bring this whole lot over towards the left hand side. OK, so that will then give me 200 cosine A and that's going to be plus this lot here. But because it's a bit like that at the moment, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to factorise it for X squared. So if I factorise it for X squared, I get X squared and I get 2 
minus root 3, and that equals 200. Okay, right, so I'm getting a little bit better with this, but let's have a look. So if I now take this over towards the other side, um, I'm going to get, I beg your pardon, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take... Uh, Right, I'm going to, yes I am. I'm going to take this over towards the other side, so I'm going to get 200 cosine A equals 200 minus x squared 2 minus root 3, okay? And then I'm going to <laughs> divide through by 200, so finally I've got cosine A equals 200 minus x squared 2 minus root 3 and that's going to divide through by 200. All right so bearing in mind what we're trying to do is we're trying to make this look like um, the um, uh, the cosine a so if I if I just write this in the corner here cosine a equals 1 minus 2 minus root 3 over 200 times x squared. Okay, all right, that's what we're trying to make it look like. Well, actually, we can do that because we've got this situation where both of these are over 200. So I've got cosine a equals 200 over 200 minus x squared 2 minus root 3 over 200. Okay, well that's fine. I can then say that 200 divided by 200 is 1 minus, and this is exactly the same as this, it's just they've written this x squared on the other side. Well that's perfectly fine, so I've got 2 minus root 3 over 200 multiplied by x squared. Okay, my gosh, what a lot of work that particular one was. Um, and I think that uh, that would be quite difficult to actually work through in a particular exam. But um, if you followed it this, for, this far, then you absolutely deserve to get a level nine. Absolutely. So the only thing I would just put is that this is angle or where, if you like, where A equals angle. P, B, Q. Okay, I hope that's all right for you. Um, please do add a comment below. If you're not sure about anything, I'll always come back to you. Um, and uh, please subscribe to the site and I'll look forward to seeing you inside the next video.